uh, what we've kind of referred to today as the kind of GX counter deck, I guess. He's yeah. playing uh, lots of non-EX, non-GX rather, Buzzwool, and then uh, relies heavily on Shrine of Punishment. Yeah, Shrine of Punishment, uh, functional reprint of Desert Ruins, such a powerful stadium card from before I even played. Yeah, way back in the day, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just being able to deal 10 damage to every Pokemon GX and EX in play in between turns is just a constant source of pressure that a lot of these decks can put on. And speaking of uh, EX and GX, Erevind does have uh, an unusual number with a uh, Zorark Gardevoir. So not a deck that we've never seen before, but one that I think uh, we didn't expect a whole lot of going into this tournament. Ah, well, you can actually be a little bit wrong there. Uh, with the resurgence of Rayquaza, uh, being weak to fairy type and having a good inherent matchup against Zorark decks, they're like, well, might as well bring back towards All-Star from uh, Oceania. Fair enough. We have seen a bit of it here. So what what do you think uh, this match is going to look like as the game goes on? It's looking pretty good for Tyler right here, if I must say. Uh, that Ultra Ball, getting himself either the Rancor and the Diancie, and then having the other one in hand, Strong Energy, Choice Ban, and then N off that Instruct. Man. Yeah, he just kind of has it all here. Uh, as we see, uh, Erevind is just sitting there with uh, just a Zoroa. Hasn't taken a turn yet, and Tyler's just kind of going off. Yeah, so one thing this uh, Buzzwool, like Shrine of Punishments, Garboder deck uh, does really well, it doesn't, I don't know if he actually even plays the Trash Lanch, right? Uh, or, no, he only plays the Trash Lanch. He doesn't play the yeah, yeah. Garbotoxin. Right. Uh, so there's no really ability lock. You're really just using it as a great late game attacker. And with Shrine of Punishments, it actually allows Buzzwool to take like perfect math knockouts on Zorark GXs. And we see we are going to Ervin's Who now. Who needs <laughs> Bridget these days? Just, you uh, can just draw Zorua double Ralts. Yeah, no Bridget needed going to allow him to play an N, uh, starting with four basic Pokemon in that opening hand. Uh, it's actually, you know, it can be one of the, I guess I'll say well, downsides no, he got, to he Bridget. End into this. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Man. Uh, so it, one of the downsides of Bridget can be that you're kind of taking a turn off from, you know, drawing any cards yeah. or fixing your hand. We've seen a lot of situations where Bridget is the only supporter and it's kind of awkward. Uh, so looks like Aravind is just going to be able to circumvent that a little bit and draw six fresh cards and have a full bench. Truly doing it all. Well, and he has the Tapu Lele for next turn. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is he started the Zorua and that's an easy prize for this Buzzwool. It looks like just confirming number of cards in hand. Tyler, we are on Tyler's turn now. No energy from Aravind. First Remoraid hits the field for Tyler and Cynthia. So a thing of note is both of these players are 3-0-1 here in this tournament. So we've, we're four rounds deep. This is round five. There's four more, including this one, to go. You need to hit 18 match points. So essentially, that tie, unless they get two more ties, is essentially a loss. Yeah, it's uh, tying in a tournament structure like this is really, really awkward um, because the it, it basically just counts as a loss as Tyler takes a knockout there. On you the know what? Row. Do you know what's not awkward? Tyler's hand because it's amazing. Just uh, Cynthia's takes a big knockout, plays another buzz wall, and again, uh, Tyler is playing a deck without any GX card. So you're not going to see, um, you know, the, the Buzzwool GX that usually accompanies the non-GX non -GX Buzzwool. You're just seeing uh, this. All one prize attackers, a stadium card that is going to prey on GX cards, and really just playing this deck is just kind of saying, all right, I, I understand what the format's doing. Now I'm going to try and just exploit it. Yeah, uh, and it's really actually kind of funny because Urvend is actually playing the Zorak Gardevoir, but he's also doing the 1-1 one, one Octillery as well. It's something I tested a lot where, you know, trade plus Abyssal Hand, you, you usually don't see those in the same deck, but it's pretty powerful if you do, because Abyssal Hand, very good against N. Gets you up to that 5, and Zorak's really good when you have a good base hand size already, where you can pick and choose what cards you want to discard. So why, uh, why this deck specifically from Aravind rather than a straight Gardevoir deck or one of the many Zorark variants? Uh, I, I think he's kind of conceding the fact that Zorark is that good. Uh, well, it's like, I, I can't not play Zorark at the World Championships. Like, this card's insane. Well, it kind of has a bad matchup against Rayquaza. So you kind of want to 
mitigate that a little bit, and he does that with Gardevoir. Seems about right. We've seen, like we said, we've seen this deck before. Gardevoir, obviously, a huge player. Zorak, a huge player. Uh, the two have combined before, so let's see if it will get Ervin to that day two that he's looking for. And, wow, this, uh, this start from Ervin as well is pretty sweet here. Having the Lele to get the Mallow for a rare candy with the Gardevoir in his hand and then has a Sycamore for next turn. Looks like we're going to see an Infinite Force there, putting some damage on that Buzzwool. Uh, Zorak's in play, Gardevoir DX in play. This would be a great uh, time for Tyler to have a Shrine of Punishments, but as you see, no Stadium in play. Yeah, he could really punish Aravend. Uh Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Tyler taking his time thinking about what his next play wants to be. Looks like he has a Guzma. And after a, after a really powerful couple, uh, couple of early turns, now he has to kind of slow down and think about what exactly he wants to do here. Uh, this, this matchup is a little bit awkward for Tyler's deck because he is trying to counter a lot of like the big triangle metagame that we were talking about earlier. And Gardevoir is not really something that's positioned in that to where... Your Trash Lanch isn't really going to do much against him because he could Twilight GX later in the game. He does play a copy of Max Potion as well as Puzzle of Time, so he can kind of get that loop going. So it's really going to depend how much pressure he can put on this Gardevoir this early on. And 100 damage coming from that Sledgehammer is not too shabby. Yeah, this can be one of the tough situations you get into when you choose to play kind of a, a counter deck or an anti-metagame deck is that if you just get paired against the wrong decks, the decks you didn't prepare for, the decks you're not trying to counter, it can be pretty rough. That's not exactly what I would describe uh, Erevin's deck as exactly because it has plenty of GXs, but uh, it's definitely, again, not part of that triangle, and that could exploit a weakness in Tyler's strategy. Oh, here. and here's one of my favorite cards in the format right now in Gallade from Breakthrough. Uh, just two very powerful, like, printings on this card. Its ability, Premonition, look at the top five, rearrange. You know, that has a pretty good combo with a uh, trade from Zorark or Abyssal Hand from Octillery. It sure does. Uh, Gallade, again, one of the many pieces that uh, just allows uh, Gardevoir to be so good. You know, you're already playing the Raul, so you're just, all right, well, I, I can just, you know, throw in a couple of gl uh, Gallade as well. It looks like uh, we have a 2-1 split of Gardevoir GX and Gallade. Yeah, and uh, Glade, not too shabby of an attacker itself. Attacks for a double colorless just like the Zorark GX. And if you played a supporter card for the turn, it deals 130 damage. Yeah, it also allows Ervin to fight on a little bit different of an axis here. You know, he, that, that, that's a non-GX, right? It's yeah. a one prize attacker. It doesn't, it, again, it just kind of uh, can try to counter Tyler's game plan a little bit. Uh, the thing he will have to try to prepare for is this big sledgehammer turn that's almost inevitable to come out uh, with Tyler playing zero two prize Pokemon in his deck. Uh, essentially, every game, sledgehammer will do 120 base one, At one time. At some point, yeah. yeah you, you are going to play... His opponents are going to be playing fair games uh, unless there's some kind of spread or anything like that going on. They're going to be you know, taking a knockout, taking a knockout... Uh, no ways to kind of get past that. As we see Buzzwool and Trubbish join Tyler's bench, filling it up. Yeah, really just having to use that Guzma. Uh, but he's probably going to bring up that Zorark, just try to get some damage on it. Not really being able to take the knockout here yet. Choice Band does help a little bit, though. Yeah, going to see... A big attack here. Tyler's going to consider his options again. That uh, Guzma putting that Zorark in the active, kind of trapping it a little bit, but obviously a good attacker in its own right. And it's going to be huge if Irvin can find the Max Potion in his deck. Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag. Going to find him whatever supporter he wants. Looks like he immediately goes for that Guzma. No hesitation. Kind of just want to get that Zork out of harm's way. That's his, like, source of draw power right now. Uh, and it's pretty strong paired with that Premonition from Glade. Absolutely. And we are going to see that Premonition right now that you mentioned it. Look at the top five and rearrange them however you would like. It's a pretty good top five. I think it's all Puzzle of Time, Double Colas, Guzma. Then two cards you don't really want. <laughs> it's an interesting thing, too, is, you know, in Pokemon in 2018, you're not... It's not like you're going to rearrange the top five and then draw them one per turn. Yeah. Like, you're going to go through them. Oftentimes, you just want to set up the top one. You set the top two, trade it into what he wants. 
And here is a Guzma going to target down that Deancey. Glade coming back into the active position. Yeah, this is definitely, if you're having to force, being, being forced to take one prize knockouts every turn, you might as well knock out the Deancey on the bench. Yeah, it, it's actually... It's, uh, a, it's a quiet threat. Yeah, maybe a slightly unintuitive strategy, unintuitive strategy if you don't uh, aren't too experienced in the Pokemon trading card game is there are a lot of kind of support Pokemon that help you set up. And oftentimes throughout the history of the game, it's been better to kind of take care of those and then let the rest fall in its place. You know, oh, I don't want you to boost your Deancey. Uh, I don't want you to boost your Buzzwool with this Deancey. I'm just going to take care of it and deal with the threats later. Yeah, it, it essentially saved 20 damage for the rest of the game from right. every fighting Pokemon's attack. Exactly. And of course, being a Prism Star, Deancey actually cannot come back. It is in the Lost Zone, so we will not be seeing that return. I'm still hoping for some card being printed that's just like, oh, I'll get the card back from the Lost Zone. It'll be Waiting. pretty powerful in combination with Deancey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a Cynthia from Tyler here. He promoted that Trubbish as well. Six fresh cards for Ooh. Tyler. and he, he Float Zone has the first card. Got a float stone, a couple of rescue stretchers, and a garboder. I also think I see the shrine of punishments we were just talking about. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, over in kind of just having the perfect setup right here to combat Tyler's deck, the glade active and the no strong energy on the buzzwolves means glade might actually survive a sludge hammer this turn, thanks to Diancie being knocked out as well. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see a float stone, a retreat. Up to the Buzzwool, replacing his own Brooklet Hill with the Shrine of Punishment and Sledgehammer. And Glade putting in a lot of work here. Uh, don't forget the two Tapu Lilies as well. Sometimes those don't seem like GXs. You know, they don't, they don't <laughs> often get knocked out. You're not attacking with them. They're not doing big damage. I mean, you know, sometimes they are. All right, so one damage on everything on the board for Erevind except for that Glade. So we start uh, and he's going to play third another Third Tapu Lele. Gets that Mallow. Seems like it's Zion that down. Yeah, Mallow, strong combination with Zorark, of course. Just search your deck, put two cards on top, and then discard a card from your hand to immediately draw them with Zorark. Uh, and, yeah, we, we saw in combination uh, turn two, I think it was, like just getting the rare candy and just having your full setup. I mean, a, a lot of the, the, form, the game right now, the format right now is... How can I draw the best cards with Zorark? Is that, you know, pu putting the best cards in my deck? Is that Mag using Mag Cargo, Mallow? Zorark is just represents such a powerful card that uh, decks are just completely built around it. And not just one, there's multiple decks. Uh, one thing he also has options for later in the game if things get rough with the Shrine of Punishments is actually Parallel City himself. Get rid of a lot of the big damage GX Pokemon. Uh, Granted, though, I, I think he's trying to set up his board a little bit before he goes for that option. Yeah, it would also get rid of the Shrine itself, so save yourself some of those knockouts. Looks like he does have oh, wow. a parallel in his hand. Yeah, he actually searched it out as well, opting to limit Tyler here. Gets rid of the Remoraid and the Trubbish. Just kind of saying, uh, these Tapu Leleas aren't uh, worth that much. I do maybe want to have a bench if I attack with Zorark. See, double puzzle here. Max Potion and a single puzzle. It'll be interesting to see where the Max Potion goes. Looks like the Glade opting, like, this is my attacker for the game. It, it's actually super hard for Tyler to knock out Glade in one hit. Yeah, that's a uh, another kind of the downside of playing this uh, all single prize attacker deck is that single prize attackers usually aren't taking big KOs, you know, again, yeah. especially against something like Glade. No weakness, something like that. Um, it can be a real, real problem. And again, you know, sometimes, I, you know, Tyler's certainly not out of this game, but sometimes the pairings just don't go right for you, and that's one of the risks. I know Tyler is no stranger to uh, playing strange decks, playing rogue decks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he, he, knew, he knew the risks. You're telling me. Man. Uh, did he double Rescue Stretcher there? I didn't quite see if it was double. I saw him play the Garboder Shrine. I uh, couldn't see if he played both of them there. Well, he at least played one, shuffled back. Okay, yeah, he hasn't played it yet. I think maybe getting a Trubbish into his hand, or the Remoraid, okay. Yeah, so first Stretcher is going to shuffle three in. Second one just gets the Remoraid. Right. He really four. needs to dig for that Rainbow Energy here. Uh, Trash Lange, I'm sure there's enough items in the discard to knock out the Glade here. So yeah, let's see. Rainbow Seven Energy, yep. <laughs> first card again. And he gets the Octillery for next turn as well. All right, so Tyler... 
taking a you know a little bit of a stumble here. Maybe not the best matchup for him, but getting back into it thanks to the power of Garboder. Looks like we're going to do a count of the items. Three, four, <laughs> you five. You can just hear them say, like, oh, it's enough. And Tyler's like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. There, there's like three rare candies in there. Like, yeah, there's, there's a lot multiple of Multiple puzzles. And that's a knockout. Trash a lanch. I'm doing a bunch of damage. I think they're actually going to count it up now just to be safe. You might think, why is my Oranguru on the bench paralyzed? But it's really, he just turned it sideways, denoting that he used the ability for the turn. Yeah, just trying to play clean, make sure nothing is forgotten about. There's a lot going on. Um, <laughs> yeah. A lot of these decks. All right, Gardevoir GX becomes active. That's trying to punishment in play again. Oh, not anymore after a field blower. So no more damage for uh, those GXs on the board. I think that was actually the uh, second Triant Shrine that went down, which is all the Tyler plays. Oh, okay. So he's actually not relying too heavily on it. Um, and unfortunately, he kind of had to play it, but he knocked out his own stadium to play it. It wasn't like he bounced one yeah. of uh I mean, Bur Everins. Burklet Hill is probably too good of a card not to play in decks that play Octillery and Buzzwall. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I could definitely see that there. Uh, it's just... You yeah. have to make concessions somewhere. That that hand was not very good uh, from over in here. Uh, just drawing a bunch of ends and Evo sodas that he can't use. I don't even think he got any energy, right? He's just going to Twilight. Yeah, he just played a Ralt. Uh, Twilight now, uh, the GX attack from Gardevoir. Really, really good. Uh, back when the Trashalanche Gard uh, Garboder was everywhere, this was a big way that the Gardevoir decks could beat it. It's just, oh, I have, you know, do I have 10 items? I'll shuffle them all back in. Do I? It looks like he has Yeah, and that's exactly more. what... No, I, I, I think he probably just has 10 items. Yeah, he's, it's like he's, he's leaving a candy at least. Uh, he might be putting in something else. Yeah, uh, the one downside to this play is you're filling your deck with stuff you don't need. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very all in, just kind of saying, I'm going to have a lot of rough top decks, although Puzzle of Time does fix that pretty yeah. well. Um, but I just don't want you to, uh, I just don't want your Garboder to be turned on. I'm down two draw supporters as well to try to combat adding more just useless cards into his deck as well. There's also something to be said for, like, clearly he didn't take all of the items. I don't know how many he left, but you can kind of, you know, do the math about, okay, well, he needs this many to knock out this. You know, how, how many can I leave in safely? And then from here, Aravind can play tighter, too, and kind of keep that in mind throughout the whole game. All right. Twilight GX, such a powerful, like, but innocuous, like, GX move. I uh, usually see, like, just these big knockouts and stuff like that. Uh, but then you have, like, other ones that just draw, like, ten cards, like Urquaza and Drampa. And then good old little Gardevoir just, oh, I'm going to shuffle back some resources. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, I think a lot of the cards, a lot of the GXs that have, uh, you know, some not weaker but less uh, damage-focused GX attacks usually have, you know, like, uh, Gardevoir GX can just attack for huge amounts of damage. It oh, doesn't really need the GX, uh, I mean, you know, stapled on. If it, if it didn't have the GX, I still think it... Would have won Worlds last yeah. year. Like, <laughs> yeah, is just a little bonus there. A lot of the times you don't even use it. And we're moving on. Tyler is going to play an N. Four cards for him, three cards for Aravind. Yeah, this is the awkward spot, because now how does Tyler really deal damage here? Yeah, I didn't quite see how many items were left, but it's not like he can force him to uh, force Aravind to put any more items on the discard pile besides maybe that one float stone off a of field blower. Uh, and, you know, Buzzwool has no energy on it. Let's see what they can put together here. It's like a pseudo Wudo and a Trubbish on Tyler's side as well. Yeah, the, the hand was not bad. Uh, special Charge getting back some of his special energies that he needs. Uh, those are his main source of attacking. I don't... Does he actually play any basics? Uh, looks like he... One Psychic and... One Psychic, yeah. Four Strong, <laughs> four Rainbow, and one Beast. Yeah, man. Wow. Abyssal Hand drawing four cards here for Tyler. A bunch of Pokemon <laughs> and a Beast Energy. Uh, not what you want to see right here. Uh, really looking for, I think, what, Floatstone? I mean, a way to move the Garboder would be nice. I don't think he has a way currently. Um... And it looks like, okay, let's see and how much. 20 damage. Just 20. Just the rare candy left, and we go back to Ervin's turn. All 
right? There is a tr the loan trade puzzle time Evo Soda, not what he's looking for. And missing an energy attachment again, it looks like. Yeah, uh, his his deck plays eight energy, four fairy, four double colorless, but I think he's just seen like the double colorless and the fairy. Yeah, he just does infinite force for 60 and passes oh, back man. to Tyler. So that's definitely a. Uh, uh, freebie, I guess, turn on Tyler's side. Just all right now. I get he gets to, another turn to try to try to draw into Guzma or yeah, Floatstone. Try to put something together. See an Ultra Ball here, Rainbow Energy, and Buzz will hit the discard pile. Just that Sudowoodo and Beast Energy in hand. Looks like we're eyeing up another Garboder, but with a lack of items, that could be a problem. And right now, Buzzwool is doing 80 damage, which is not enough to take the knockout on Gardevoir GX. He would need to attach that Beast Energy to actually take the knockout. Uh, nice. But that also forces him to draw into the Float Stone only. So I think this gives him out of Guzma as well. Looks like he did not hit it. He hit Field Blower. Oh, two items in the discard. All right, here, let's see. Gets One, the two. Guzma and All the right, Float Stone. All right, so he is, Tyler is right back into this. He has options here so you could try to take out that zorark that's the main source of draw for overend right now and yeah what, what do you do in this spot jeremy if you're, if you're, if you're in tyler's shoes what well what I, i'm for? just making sure my math's right like it, yeah so the bus hole does not take a knockout he would need another choice band so taking out the main source of draw power for his opponent like that's Really, what you kind of want to do, and yeah, saving the choice band strong does a little bit more damage to the GXs later on. So, and there's a knockout Tyler at just two prizes remaining to Ervin's three. And we knew that oh, it looks like he's actually gonna go ahead and scoop him up. All right, yeah, he had a bunch of Evo sodas in his hand, but really, what he was looking for is like Glade Rare Candy or something like that. Really missing that premonition that he utilized so well early on in that game, yeah. So Turning point in that game, I think I think we saw things be pretty even at first, and then it looked like Tyler was kind of having a rough go of it in the beginning. But I think uh, turning it around with the knockout on the Glade and then keeping up immediate pressure uh, was kind of what won him there. And it just, I mean, Ervin just his hand the past two turns was just nothing. And he, without that Zorak, he couldn't draw. I mean, Ty, that was a good. Uh, I hesitate to say comeback, but nice uh, solidifying it, the it, game by Tyler. It kind of feels like Tyler's deck always plays the comeback game. Yeah, you just kind of always, you're gonna, you're probably gonna go down. You're probably gonna look like you're losing, and then you win at the <laughs> like, last minute. I'll do like seventy each turn max, and then oh, you have four prizes. All right, I'll knock out your fresh GX. Uh, okay, I'll knock out this guy. Put seventy on. I'll knock out this other guy. Oh, that's game. All right. Yeah, exactly. We see Tyler take a mulligan. So, what needs to go different for Aravind here? <laughs> Obviously, he needs to draw a little better. Maybe get some energy cards in his hand to attach, but. Do you think there's any kind of like critical moment that he could have played differently in that match? Uh, not, not really. Like he just did not draw into his energy the times he needed him. He got that sweet turn to Gardevoir as well off that Mallow, but nothing really came of it. And then getting the Glade out as well, and then Tyler missing the knockout on the Glade with that Sledgehammer was insane. But the pressure that Tyler kept putting on, like you have to think about it. Uh, he has to knock out six Pokemon against Tyler. Uh, yeah. that, that, that's a lot to ask for. Yeah, so the, you know, these decks that are playing a lot of non-GXs are all about trading resources. And uh, taking a look at the prizes real quick. Uh, so we saw two Buzzswole on Tyler's prizes, but we have Erevin's one Glade yeah, one in his copy. prizes and a Puzzle of Time and a DCE as well. He's not going to be happy to see that Glade prized. Uh, don't know. Don't think he's gonna have access to that for the majority of the game. He's gonna find out that it's prized right now off of this Ultra Ball. And that's the risk you run playing these one of like tech cards. Uh, is when you need them in these certain matches, you just kind of get the unlucky. Oh, look, shaking his head. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Are, are, did I pass it? Mm, no, it's not in no, here. No, it's just not right, in. This game's gonna be a little bit harder. All right. I guess I'm going to have to have a different strategy this turn. Ultra Ball comes down. Uh, Tapu Lele Wonder Tag. I imagine he's going to get that Bridget there. Put three basic Pokemon onto his bench. 
Bridget's such a powerful, powerful supporter card. And it actually wasn't really that powerful when it first came out. Really just unlocked its potential with Tapu Lele. Yeah, the ability, the, the problem is, is that a, a, you know, eighth turn Bridget is not where you want to be. A lot of times a second or third turn Bridget uh, just doesn't really do anything. So the power of Tapu Lele to just immediately find it on the first turn and play it right when you need it is huge. Yeah. Especially as you consider things like Ultra Ball act as virtual copies of Tapu Lele. I mean, it really, it's that Tapu Lele has changed uh, the game in a lot of ways. All right, and there's another Waltz coming down on the bench. He, he has that very energy. Oh, can we see a draining kiss? I'm just going to see a pass back. Oh, it's, it's first turn. The first turn <laughs> yeah. after all. Maybe in the future. I, I'm just hyped, all right. All right, Floatstone on the Oranguru. Dancy on the bench, Trubbish on the bench, Cynthia from Tyler. Yeah, and we see him not play that China Punishments. That's because he only plays the two, and he wants to maximize its damage. He doesn't want to play it and not deal damage to his opponent's board. And then watch it get field blower yeah. away or paralleled away. <laughs> uh, the point I was making earlier about Tyler's deck is you're looking at this deck, and it, it's clear that he is taking two prizes when he knocks out your stuff, and you're taking one prize. But the kind of deeper level to that, too, is that when... <laughs> Uh, oh, there's so many sorry sorry to interrupt no, you, but uh, that, that was an insane Cynthia. I don't know if you guys were listening to Josue before, but Cynthia's amazing. <laughs> Not playing at all. Uh, drawing the Buzzswole and the Strong Energy, along with the Float Stone from before, gets the knockout on that Ralts. One energy down already. We see a single Puzzle of Time, but followed oh. by a work, and then a Professor. This hand order. would be insane if he had Glade in the deck. Oh, Insane. Wow. He'd immediately be able to get the Gallade out. Looks like he's still going to play the Ultra Ball, double colorless, and N hitting the discard pile. He might go for the Octillery here. I'm not sure. Those options Maybe are... Maybe even another Zorark. Yeah, Octillery, Zorark. It looks like he's just make, looking he, through his deck, making sure, okay, is, is it actually prized? You, you might think, like, well, why doesn't he get the Gardevoir GX? Because he has Rare Candy in hand. It, it makes sense, right? Well, he has no Fairy Energy. That Fairy Energy he had got knocked out with that Ralts. So he's going to need to try to cobble together something here uh, to even have an attack this turn because he Gardevoir GX can't attack for a double colorless. And it looks like he does take the safe route. Ultra Ball finds Octillery. I don't know what else is in his hand, but he will be able to Abyssal Hand for at least a few cards and hopefully uh, kind of shore this game back up. Looks like, yeah, just Field Blowers. Cards that he can definitely play. Yeah, he's actually committing the double colas to the active. Uh, needs to draw Fairy Energy, Gardevoir GX. No. That's a miss, yeah. He drew the Floatstone, though. He could have gone into something. Let's see, maybe Zorark trying to spin the wheel again? It's possible at this point he just gets the Gardevoir and accepts that he can't attack with it. That is true. It, uh, it's just putting it's it on the a board. pretty beefy GX Pokemon. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's going to do. Uh, Ultra Ball for the Gardevoir. He has the Rare Candy in hand. Not really much else he can do in that spot. I guess he could have Zoroarked and then tried to trade, but looks like he's just going to take the route that allows him to uh, put the GX into play. Yeah, I think the, the worst thing would be if he knocks out another Ralts. Yeah, so unfortunately having to use that double colorless just to retreat, some of that Tapu Lele, and this sort of play is just kind of saying, okay, I, I, I'm not really advancing anything. I'm just kind of, I just don't want to lose more. Yeah. So Tyler is in the driver's seat here, and let's see what he can put together on his turn. Choice band on the active. There's that Shrine of Punishments right after the second oh, GX man. comes down. What an insane hand here from Tyler. Uh, Shrine really just putting pressure on Erevin's side of the field, and Buzzwool just dealing a lot of damage right now. Sudowoodo coming down. Uh, what is Sudowoodo's role going to be in the matchup for Tyler? Uh, it, it's not very important in the matchup. There's no way for Erevin to really take knockouts on the Buzzwool with Zoroarks. And he, that's not really his plan anyway. He wants to fight this battle with Gardevoirs and Glades. But uh, it does kind of just, it's a free card he could play. Like, yeah, I'm going to do this so you can't draw a Tapu Lele and sure. get out of a, a bad hand. It definitely does not shine here as much as it would in the kind of uh, standard Zorak decks that are relying much more on Riot as beating. 
But it is pretty good because uh, against standard Zorark decks, in combination with Diancy, uh, they can't knock it out if you have Pseudo Widow in play. Right, right. Uh, and anytime they can't knock out Diancy, you're you're winning. Like absolutely, 110 damage on the Tapu Lele. Looks like we're going to see an Abyssal Hand refilling Ervin's hand before an Evo Soda, getting that second Zorark GX. Yeah, but again, that puts essentially like two free prizes on the board here. Yeah, again, uh, just like game one, we see Ervin's hand just lacking energy. You know, he has all these he has all these Pokemon and really nothing to do with them. Yeah, he is down two double colas and a fairy energy right now. And looking at his list, he actually doesn't play any floatstone. Oh, no, he plays one floatstone. So one way to retreat this Tapu Lele. Uh, otherwise, he would have to manually retreat it. And here's a Mallow, again, works in perfect combination with Zorark GX's trade ability. Uh, Going to be able to find out, find whatever he wants here. Didn't quite see what he took, uh, but we will see that momentarily, I'm sure. I think one of them was probably Max Potion and maybe Double Colas. And even he, we, he might even start attacking with Tapu Lele right now. Yeah, regardless of the specifics, it's definitely going to be something that uh, allows him to get out of the situation involving the Tapu Lele. There's a Field Blower that was not one of the cards. And Max Potion, no more damage. Double Colorless on the Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele aggro, 60 damage. And we're going to Tyler's turn. Do I call him or do I call him? You did call. You saw in the future. <laughs> All right. Now, Tyler, this is what Tyler wants, though, right? Like, he wants his opponent to play all these resources to save a Tapu Lele, to deal 60 damage with his fourth energy left in his deck and just really not really disrupt Tyler as much as he could. Yeah, I'm no expert on Tyler's deck, but I'd imagine that any play that any of his opponents make that don't really advance things, uh, you know, don't build up a big attacker that can mow through a couple of Tylers, don't really matter to him. Obviously, you know, the Tapu Lele is dealing damage. Healing damage is not ideal, but I think he's prepared to fight through most things uh, as long as they're not like you said, disrupting him or just something he can't exactly deal with. Oh, we see Reggie Rock from Celestial Storm. Uh, I believe the attack name was Enhanced uh, Stomp. Something like that, yeah. Not a card that you see all the time. Again, new from the Celestial Storm expansion. It, it's a pretty sweet card, though. Uh, enhanced Stomp, if it has a Pokemon tool attached to it, does 20 more damage. So 40 damage base. Strong energy, 60. Diancy, 80. Choice Band, 110. Guess what 110 does? It knocks out Zoroarks. Absolutely. Uh, again, a non, a non uh, two prize attacker, just a single prize there, does, only requires one energy attachment. Uh, you know, you can get it with Brooklet Hill, just uh, a great addition to this deck. There we see Tyler off the instructors, has a handful of supporters here. Uh, plenty of options for him. He does decide to go with the uh, maximum value supporter of Professor Sycamore, get rid of, getting rid of an N and a Guzma. And it does draw into some energy and the second Shrine of Punishments as well. Strong energy on that Regirock. And 100 damage coming down, chooses not to play the Shrine. Why do you think he would choose not to play the Shrine there? Is there any particular reason? I think it's because... He's looking at his board from his opponent's, like, viewpoint. He's like, man, Parallel's pretty good against me right now. I will, if my opponent, if, I, if I'm putting my opponent on playing Parallel next turn, why would I waste the Shrine? Yeah, definitely. You want to, uh, we saw Tyler, despite winning game one, he actually lost the uh, Stadium War, as we call it, with uh, having to play his Shrine first, and then he just eventually ran out of them. So waiting for Aravin to put uh, Stadium into play before he can kind of bump it is a... Uh, Really nice, maybe a play that not everyone, not every player would see. Sometimes you just, you know, just want to attack, you just want to do as much damage as possible. But Tyler, no doubt, been testing this deck, playing it quite a bit. All right, and there is the first trade, getting that Mallow. So second puzzle time and a Fairy Energy. So a lot of options here with the puzzles, as always, considering just attaching to the Tapu Lele, but just going to go ahead and... Uh, do the safe thing, I suppose, which is just retreat. 
So this requires him to get an energy with the puzzle of time. Uh, because with just the fairy energy infinite force to 60, which still doesn't not take the knockout on the buzz hole, uh, there's no like shine of punishments for regular Pokemon. For the GXs. <laughs> Yeah, it does commit him, as you see, to taking that double colorless that's in the discard pile. He's just kind of deciding what he wants to pair with it. It looks like he's going to go ahead and take Mallow. Yeah, he could just be like, well, next turn I'm going to have to puzzle time again, so why not? Might as well try. But it looks like we're actually going to see a Twilight here. All right. Th this is actually pretty good because you put all these good cards in your deck. And you're like, okay, well, I'll just search it out next turn with Mallow. I'm fine. Yeah, it looks like he's... Uh, just wants to, again, put item cards back in to lessen the trash lance damage. And then also, like you said, just try to fill his deck with, if there's any remaining slots left over, good cards, such as uh, maybe three copies of Puzzle of Time. Ah, it's not too bad. Yeah, remember, he has that fourth one prized. Yeah, so he does, he's going to have access to those again. Uh, and the Parallel City coming down. So that's 10 cards. Again, leaving that rare candy that's pretty much useless at this point. Yeah, opts not to get back any energy. Yeah, in interesting play. Just, I guess it's deciding, okay, I need to make my deck more consistent and I need to try to deal with the Garboder threat. All right, Twilight GX again, super powerful. but And now his deck's filled with all those puzzle times again. But Tyler is still just like, you haven't done anything to me. Yeah, again, I mean, we just talked about advancing the game state, right? And that... Twilight GX is a, is a good attack, and it's going to matter in a turn, two turns, three turns, but not right now. And it still allows, it doesn't put any pressure on Tyler. Tyler doesn't, you know, isn't out of resources. Uh, he's, it's just allowing him to kind of have another turn. I wouldn't necessarily call it exactly free, but he, I don't think he's too unhappy to see that either. Yeah, and we see some conversation going on here. He just wants to double check, it's fine. Yeah, not, not sure what... Choice band coming down on the Regirock. Guzma bringing up the Zorark. Uh, folks, that is a knockout there. Enhanced Stomp. Regirock taking the knockout here. Uh, still holding that shrine, too. You don't need it. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's just like what you said. Uh, you actually called this exact situation. Uh, so I think the question now is uh, the Choice band is both, you know doing more damage because of the attack and because it's a choice band, you know, uh, not a card you see all the time. Yeah, uh, Regirock a little better than, you know, uh, our good old friend Kyle Sukovich's uh, Zygarde EX that he, he really wants to Man, what? Show up. Why, why you got to make it personal like that? <laughs> it's going to be a knockout. Three prizes remaining for Tyler. Still all six prize cards for Aravind here. Yeah, it's rough, man. Uh, this deck is looking pretty sweet in a field of, like, Zorark. Yeah, I mean, I think they're, you know, when you choose to play a deck like this, you roll the dice, and it, I mean, looks like, I saw a tweet from Tyler earlier that said, uh, you know, 3-0 or 3 one or something. Deck seems pretty good. Just very confident, you know, just uh, not having a problem at all throughout this tournament. Not sure what he ended up tying against, but better than a loss. I'm trying to get his... Fourth win here, one step closer to day two here in Nashville. Yeah, so like I said before, he essentially needs three wins. Uh, he could win two and then tie the next two. Uh, it's something people could actually do as well, like uh, four zero one, win the next one and then get paired up against some five zero ones and five zero twos and just ID into day two uh, it's definitely a little bit risky though yeah this is kind of a weird like if anything goes wrong in that like if you uh, get pared down then you, you just have to down, play it out yeah, you it, lose and you lose the whole thing yeah like, exactly I, I don't suspect I, I don't actually know the numbers but i think since we've switched to this world championship format i think most people have just kind of you know been willing to play it out uh not worried too much about it it does look like ultra ball finds a zorua from Erevin's side of the field Still yep. just, like, he's the one playing from behind when Tyler's deck literally, like, plays from behind. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he has six prizes remaining. Tyler has three. He does have a little bit more of an offense here. Um, Gardevoir GX with double colorless and Ferion. He has one Zorark. But, uh, but, but you have to think, like, 
is there enough time for Ervin to take six prizes before Tyler takes his last three? We'll, we'll see. And it's going to depend on these how these next few turns go out, uh, go on. Oh, and the Parallel City finally came down. Now Shrine of Punishments is looking pretty good here. It's going to be a Parallel City Infinite Force knockout. Uh, Ervin takes his first prize of the game here going down to five and now Tyler has to think about all right let's run these numbers we have all these damage modifiers what, what oh there's the beast energy on, on that too man that's yeah. so much damage beast choice uh, we got the DMC, so of course 130 base right now does he have another energy it doesn't look like he has it in hand mm. it's like he has really he has, he has a lot of cards in hand field blowers and things like that uh, couldn't quite make all the cards out Oh, yeah, I didn't even count swing around math. Yeah, yeah. All right, so base 80, Diancie 100, and then uh, 50 damage from the energy, so 150, 180 with the choice band. So with the 10 damage on the Gardevoir, he would need two heads. If he gets a strong energy, then he would need one. All right, let's see if we get to that point. Brooklet Hill finds a Remoraid, Cynthia here. Six new cards for Tyler. No other attackers up. Potentially going to put it all into this Buzzwool. Yeah. Three energy. Try and make an attack. It's going to depend on what the contents of his hand looks like after this Cynthia. Yeah, that Parallel City having to discard that Trubbish was pretty big, even though there's not much items in Ervin's discard right now. It, it's still... Oh, there's the strong energy. All right, Tyler is Does he now commit? being tempted. Strong energy has been found. This is essentially what Pokemon is, guys. Flipping coins <laughs> to take the high roll knockout on your opponent. That is so much damage from a little tiny bus wall. You can see Tyler uh, actually been playing pretty fast in this game, but right now he's kind of thinking a bit, all right, what, what exactly do I want to do? Have some options. Ultra Ball will be the first one. Yeah, so he does have a few options. Uh, he can get another Buzzwool, another Trubbish. Uh, don't... Oh, yeah, he prized two of the Buzzwools, didn't he? And ran through a few of them. Yeah, but. he actually Ultra Balled a Garbodor away there and then got a Trubbish. I'm not sure what the contents of his deck or hand are, but maybe would have done that in the reverse order if he could. He might be forced to strong the active... Struct right. gets the Octillery right, strong right. energy. Not bad, not bad. All right, here we go. Swing around. Tails. He needs a heads right here. Oh, tails. And tails. Oh, no. <sighs> that right, Gardevoir so. GX is 20 damage away from being knocked out. Oh, that's yeah, heartbreaking. Heartbreaking for Tyler there. Had to take... Take the risk. Look at all those damage. Look at all those dice. Still not <laughs> enough to knock out the Gardevoir. But th this is the, the opening Ervin needed, right? Absolutely. I mean, he, you just needed something to go wrong for Tyler there uh, to get back into this game. You know, certainly not out of it, especially after a turn like that from Tyler. Ooh, so puzzle of time puzzle off the top. And that's not bad. Could we see maybe a Max Potion? Max Potion Fairy Energy would be very good right now. Yeah, he has one in there from when he did it on the uh, Tabu Lele, I believe. It could well, be he might have twilighted it back. The, oh, correct, correct. Yeah, he might be forced to puzzle a time for the Fairy Energy Mallow and then Mallow into the Max Potion and then, like, trade into it. Yeah, it's always a, a lot of decisions when you're playing you know, puzzle of times and you're mallowing. It looks like uh, fairy energy and mallow are the cards he's going to take. Yeah, and this is the last hurrah tournament for puzzle of time as well. Uh, getting rotated and then the newly banned card in expanded. Yeah, puzzle of time, very, very powerful card. Uh, one of the cards that I th think uh, probably needed to be banned and expanded was kind of doing some degenerate things. Uh, in standard has not done anything crazy, but has been a role it's, player. The it's whole it's time. been probably one of the best cards yeah, standard absolutely, playing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we are seeing that Mallow. Those two cards set aside. They're going to be the ones that go on top of Erevin's deck. 
Yeah, it's very... Mal is a very awkward card uh, just to play with. Like, you search out these two cards and then shuffle the rest of your deck and then place them down, then put them on top. And most players don't even put them on top because they're going to just trade into them anyway. In this case, Abyssal Hand. Even better. And it was Max Potion, so that those flips meant even more now. There's a attached Fairy. Yeah, Max Potion, Fairy, Infinite Force does enough damage, more than enough to take the knockout here. Uh, and with not a second Buzzswole, that means Sledgehammer might not even be a factor this turn. Yeah, no, no, no second attacker up even. He has that trouble with the choice ban, but no Garboder, and I saw him discard one last turn. Again, no Buzzwool. Uh, I don't think there's a way to retreat. I don't see any Floatstone or anything on board, so uh, it's going to go ahead and send up that Oranguru Ultra Ball off the top. Wow, that's not what you want to see, though. He does have an Artillery, so he will be able to draw a few more cards. Debating whether he wants to play it or not. It'll be interesting to see how many items are in Erevin's discard, but there can't be that many. Uh, he, he literally shuffled back like eight of them. Yeah, I think when he shuffled it, when he uh, twilighted, I think the only one in there was Rare Candy. No, that was game one. Uh, there was a couple Ultra Ball, maybe. Okay, okay. But. And then I think he played the Max Potion, played Puzzle of Yeah, he's stuff definitely like that. played a few since then. All right, Rainbow Energy on the Trubbish. Cynthia coming down. Six cards for Tyler. What is, what is he looking for here? Garbutter, number one. Way to Retreat, number two. Uh, Floatstone is really the only option. Uh, he could kind of take a turn off, but then, again, you're not really advancing your own board state, so let's see. Yeah, nothing here. Uh, does have Rescue Stretcher. Yeah, he can rescue. There is a Garboder in his discard pile, at one at least, so he can rescue that back. Uh, but no way to retreat the Oranguru. Yeah, no way to retreat. Might just have to kind of wiggle his way into getting these last three prizes because this Gardevoir is looking pretty strong right now. And I think, uh, you know, is it fair to say that I think in the, in these decks, uh, this sort of thing can happen. Just late game awkward hands, uh, usually yeah. at the hand of end, but sometimes just because. And then your opponent has all these big uh, high HP Pokemon that you just can't deal with. It, you know, it's kind of like if you let your opponent get to a certain point in the game uh, when you're playing one of these counter decks, you can't quite get there. Yeah, if you don't stick a shrine or if you don't get enough early chip damage with Buzzwalls or Regirocks or even Gardevoir or Garboders, uh, then your late game, I, I think. It really just matters against, like, that he's playing against Gardevoir is because the reason he's losing right now is because Twilight GX. Oh, absolutely. If this were just a normal game. Like, if this was a regular Zorark deck with, like, a secondary attacker, he would already won, honestly. Yeah, Gar Garboder just would have gone off immediately, and he would have focused a lot more on Garboder too. Uh, that would have changed the landscape of the game entirely. Looks like... Uh Trying to figure out what to do with this rescue stretcher. Yeah, so we got the three and then Brooklyn Hill, Brooklyn Hill for the bus wall right away. Kind of just shortcutting. They are running out of time very quickly here. Two minutes left to go in this round. Garboder hits the field. There's a field blower getting rid of that Brooklyn Hill. And just anything you do, try to instruct. No floatstone there, though. A couple of supporters and a buzz wall. We go ahead and take a look at the discard pile. Just, uh, Make sure, you know, I know what resources you've used, how many items are in there. And, and it's awkward because there is very little time left, but you want to make the best play possible. And you need to be able to do that by knowing what your opponent has left. Yeah, so, of course, if if Tyler were, uh, if, if time were to end before this game ended, Tyler would actually win the match. He is up a game. Uh, the unfortunate scenario is that Aravind wins the game uh, in the next game. I guess unfortunate for Tyler, fortunate for him, is that he'll win yeah. a game in the next couple of minutes, and then we'll end up with a draw, which is at two draws is basically as good as a loss. So uh, really not what either of these players want, but I think Aravind has to know the draw. a draw is the only way that I can deal with this here. I'm not going to win a full game. I don't think the uh, players can actually see the clock, but he has a good idea of what how much time is left. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. He is going deep in the tank right now. This was up the Garboder. Looks like he's going to go ahead and 
attach a fairy to the Ralts for free. And thanks to Secret Spring. We haven't really seen come up in this match yet. Well, yeah, he never really had fairy energy yeah, in his hand to use it. The first time he's had two, I think. I'm going to see some trading. Abyssal hand trade. Maybe he decks himself out. <laughs> All right. Oh, Abyssal hand has been used. Both trades have been used. He doesn't have the knockout here. Uh, not hitting double colorless energy or puzzle times or... Yeah, that's... He can't win. I mean, he's uh, ahead and concedes, actually. Yeah, he knows time's almost done. And when you see, like, I, mean, I still have to take four prizes, and that's at least four turns. And I only get two turns? That, yeah. That's not going to happen. And he, he sees the riding on the wall, and Tyler coming out, kind of just surviving at the end for that win. Yeah, Tyler is going to advance to 4-0-1. Still a little bit of work to do. Again, players have to have six.